Ladies and gentlemen, here we are on how to break an already functioning game 101 by Blizzard. It started with Starcraft, moved to Heroes of the Storm, World of Warcraft and now it's time for Overwatch boys and girls. You have probably heard or read news about Overwatch 2 already. Whole gameplay flow changing to 5 vs 5, new map changes, new moves or playstyle adjustments to heroes and maybe even how competitive rank is now broken with nearly everyone thrown into the depths of the bronze rank. Rather than just talking about what Overwatch 2 is, I'll try to share my thoughts and feelings and explain some of the stuff that I experienced throughout my journey until 40 levels of Battle Pass gameplay time. I wanted to experience and see how strong characters are and how Blizzard broke a functioning system of Overwatch until the half roadway of Battle Pass, so I will try to be unbiased as much as possible. Overwatch is still fun to play and can be addictive when played with friends, but there are lots of unfinished aspects within. And that single player mode that Blizzard promised to implement with Overwatch 2? There is none. And no one even remembers or cares for that I guess. Overwatch 2 is 5 vs 5 now, turning the rogue queue composition into 1 tank, 2 DPS and 2 healers. At first I had some concerns about the change of the team composition but I think I got used to this new flow of the games now. All tank heroes have high damages and they need to know when to die, when to guard and when to switch places better than before. Although some of the tanks like Orisa and Zarya are turned into monsters now, Reinhardt has lost his bulwark role and now also needed to be played as bruiser when it's necessary to clear any low health DPS or healers nearby. Doomfist left his DPS role and now turned into a flanking mobile tank just like Wrecking Ball, charging into enemy team and then scattering their defensive position while DPS is trying to hunt healers and other DPS while the healers trying to survive while panicking and crying like Kobeni of Chainsaw Man. 5 vs 5 made Overwatch even more intense than before and it seems like the team compositions and counter picks have become more important than before. However, that's not all. Overwatch 2 has become a free to play and this time came with a battle pass instead of loot boxes that is used to be earned after each profile level up. This battle pass is quite unsatisfying to be frank. It pushes players to grind for experiences to get at least cool looking skins on higher levels and main selling point of the battle pass is the new skin rarity of Mythic that is right now only implemented for Genji. If you are not a Genji player or not interested then you need to wait for the next seasonal battle pass but if you are then you better purchase the battle pass and start playing ASAP. Each match brings about 1000 XP for battle pass and since each level is around 10,000, you better play Overwatch 2 non-stop until the level 80 my friend. Compared to other battle pass titles like Call of Duty or Fortnite whatsoever, there is also not enough rewards for people who are against purchasing the battle pass and even if you buy it, there are only some handful of skins like Pharaoh's Sky Centurion, Mercy's Miko and Genji's cyberpunk skin that feels worthy and the rest is just voice lines or some accessories that probably no one cares. To make things a bit easier there are also daily, weekly and seasonal challenges that rewards battle pass experience but by solely doing these won't suffice unfortunately. Each season will take around 60 days with different themes by each season so We'll see how Blizzard improves or even condemns Overwatch to die in the future. Whole quick play and ranked game modes are turned into unranked and competitive now and even this unranked mode feels like ranked due to 5 vs 5 battles and role queues. If you want to mess around, learn a new hero or just have simple fun without tryharding, you better queue for all role queue that lets you choose whatever the role you want to play. This all role queue, namely the first and the best Overwatch time, can also be queued by competitive mode with a separate rank but for now, until Blizzard either fixes this damn matchmaking, you better stay away from the competitive because its ranking system sucks Winston's hairy ass. I am not a pro player, I solo queued as support and that's on me alright. Won 7 matches with 3-4 to four losses and guess where I ended up with over 10,000 heals every match. Bronze fucking 5. I was devastated and couldn't believe that I sucked that much. Next thing I did was to search through internet if anyone else had this problem, never mind me, but even grandmasters, no life dudes ending up on bronze rank proves that Blizzard fucked up pretty bad here. Some call this situation a bug and some call the reset of matchmaking ratings, I call it how to win overwatch competitive on purpose. Competitive maps and even the objectives are fun to challenge but the end result is just devastating for your mentality. Well then, let's talk about the 3 
3 new heroes, Junker Queen the tank, Sojourn the DPS and Kiriko the healer. All three of them are efficient, all three of them are fun to play and matching with lots of team compositions. Between these three, I played Kiriko around 4 to 5 hours already and got several play of the games with her tiny damage window but good, efficient healing ability and one of the most broken ultimate. She is agile, can teleport to one of her teammates, dispel any negative status effects like burn or anti-heal and her ultimate creates a pad of Japanese Tori gates that boosts the attack and movement speed of any team member on that path. This ultimate is quite efficient on a broken level even, you can quickly turn the tides of the combat or capture a point with increased attack speed. Just imagine Zenyatta going full Jojo mode and sending hundreds of steel balls to opponents faces or a soldier 76 with activated ultimate. Besides that, Sojourn can be summarized as a mix of soldier 76 with Widowmaker's sniping ability, she can slide on ground and then do high jump while cancelling this ability, her normal attack can charge her sniping ability with each damage and her ultimate can allow her to send multiple laser rays that deal heavy damage and snipe enemy healers without any problems. Especially Sojourn and Soldier 76 can create insane pressure from range to enemy team and just imagine a Kiriko using ultimate for these two. That is just pure bloodbath. My only itty bitty critique about Sojourn is, I literally don't understand when she activates her ultimate and just die because of this. Last but not least, Junker Queen seems like a fragile tank without any shield but her scream allows her and her team to gain movement speed and additional health points for a specific time and she can deal insane damage with her ranged dagger and close combat axe. Her ultimate sends her charging on a path and disabling healing for the enemy team just like Anna's bomb ability. She might not be durable like Zarya or Diva, but she's quite efficient and can help you to capture points and create pressure to enemy team in payload maps. Other than that, some heroes are buffed and insanely broken that needs adjustments as soon as possible. And let's start with Zarya, shall we? Her barrier abilities are now share the same cooldown pool, which lets her to use barrier on herself for eternity or on her team if she ever feels generous. I've seen lots of Zaryas with infinite shields and there is literally no way to stop her with 90% charged death ray while defending against the whole enemy team. And just imagine a Mercy healing her non-stop, that is an alternative definition of the word desperation. Orisa is also another monster that can deal heavy damage, also can tank incoming pressure, knock back enemy units with her javelin and also prevent bullets and push back enemy with her spin ability. But compared to Zarya, she is somewhat more acceptable let's say. Besides the tanks, Farah feels somewhat stronger with her increased splash damage, Moira can deal both high damage and heals her own teammates efficiently which makes her one of the best picks for competitive matches. Also, I would have been speaking about Bastion and Torbjorn right now, but both are now in maintenance, so it seems like Overwatch needs some time to get back on the tracks again. I'm not against Overwatch going to free to play here, but there are lots to fix, lots to improve within these next two months, otherwise Overwatch might lose this new blood and all the hype and we might start waiting 5 to 10 minutes to play as DPS role once again. With all flows of competitive, of aiming that seems to be either a bug or a new change, Overwatch is simply fun. It is playing addictively fun, especially with friends. New game modes of capturing the robot and then pushing it to the enemy base is quite competitive and requires a different approach than point capture or payload pushing. This begging the robot to move faster game mode offers Coliseum of Rome, Portugal streets and new Canada map which are quite charming and refreshing but in addition we lost Hanamura, Volskaya Industries and Temple of Anubis maps. And I get why they are gone since it creates a bottleneck of attacking and winning but I would rather see these maps revised or remade rather than gone forever. Here we are talking about the same blizzard who messed things up better than making it better and called it Overwatch 2. If you never played Overwatch before be sure to invite your friends and give it a try, you will have fun. And if you used to play Overwatch, then it's once again best time to return back to it as long as you play unranked and just for fun with no strings attached, no competitive plays until this whole mess is fixed. Just pick whatever you want to play and enjoy this beautiful mess.